Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at a Whittle script that demonstrates the multi-output pattern for pipelining. And you can see the diagram reflects the script that we're going to work with on the bottom of this page. We'll have three tasks and they're written here as steps. And the first task to the second task will be a little bit familiar if we're watching this series in order because it basically just replicates what we saw if I scroll up here in the linear pattern, step one and step two. Where it differs though, you can see, is that from step two to step three, we have multiple outputs in step two and multiple inputs in step three. So as we did with the other examples, let's use VS Code to look at our example script. So we can see that we've got our workflow and we're working with a string and we have three steps and we're simply setting our input values of each step to the output values of the step that has completed. So you can see that in line eight, for example, and in line nine. Now, if we look at step A, we just take a string in, and then uh, I modeled this after an example on the Broads Tarot website, and they were showing it with three different programs, which would be more typical in a pipelining example. You wouldn't have the task doing the same thing, but just to make it simpler, I just change program A and there'll be program B and program C to the same command, just so it's easier to follow. So in line 18, we're just echoing out the in string value and we're creating a file. And you can see that's being assigned to out one in standard out in step A. In step B, we have a string in, but notice when we call step B on line eight, we're taking in the output of step A. And then the output here, we're just duplicating. Again, I kind of just made this a little bit simpler so we could follow the logic in lines 31 and 32. And then their output in lines 35 and 36. For step C, we have two inputs defined on line 42 and 43, and, and they're called here in line nine and then we're only using one of the outputs. So of course we do have a JSON file that's going to be defining our original input here, our original string in. So as we've done with the other examples, let's see how this runs on our GCE VM and then on Terra. So I just catted the input file so you can see the input text and then I've already created the uh, multi WDL. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And while we do see that it succeeded, workflow finished with a success, it is a little bit tricky to read the output because we've got multiple steps here. And again, we're starting to move towards more production level pipelining. Of course, you could create a workflow with one task or two tasks or even three tasks, but typically you're creating workflows with a larger number of tasks. So it's interesting to contrast the output here with the output of systems that operate at a different level, basically, of interaction, and that would be Terra. So let's actually look at how this workflow pattern uh, runs on Terra. So again, I already created it, and as with the other examples, I did have to add a Docker to each step, so you can see lines 23 through 25. Each step requires a Docker container, which is a Terra requirement. And then for the input, I just put a different string here. And I'm going to go ahead and run the analysis. And if I click View to open the job history, I can see that step A has started. And here's my input. And you can see when you work with higher level systems, it is just really much easier to be able to visualize what's going on. And, you know, Terra is just one example of one of these higher level systems, just the one that I generally work with. But as I mentioned, there are other ones such as DNA Nexus and uh, uh, DNA Stack that work with Whittle uh, scripts. This shows the out input and output coming into step B. And then if I refresh here, also, interestingly, even though I've got one more step to go, I can click on the timing diagram 
and I can see the timing diagram for the first uh, step at this point. And I'm just going to click refresh again. And because this is taking a minute, I'm going to just go ahead and look at one that's already completed. And once it's completed, again, you can see how nice this is for following the inputs and outputs uh, and understanding what is flowing between the tasks and also looking at the timing diagram. So uh, this is an example of multi-in, multi-out, and this script is in this section. And once again, happy pipelining.